so um, I, I, I think I want to just start with the first question that's on the list because I, I think because of the, the importance of yours as one of the earlier texts, we, maybe we should start with history. At, at this point, how do you feel your web text was innovative in a historical or material context? Oh, my web text, well, there's all, all, all a whole bunch of things I wouldn't do now, <laughs> like the colors, for okay. one. But I think the most innovative thing about my web text is that it, it was deliberately designed as a web text for both print and for screen. Mm -hmm. So you have the web text version. Well, let me go back a step. Uh, historically, that's my dissertation prospectus. Ah. And I sent it, the page to McDoherty when he was editor of Kairos. Right. I, was, I, sh I so miss him. But I sent him the page in which he defined native hypertext in one of its earliest definitions. That was his term, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I said, look, I'd like to use your definition. And so I sent him the page that I had quoted him from Kairos. He wrote back right away and said, I want to publish this. Because he had taken a look at the whole thing. So that's how I got my first publication. Uh -huh. And I, I did a very light edit on it, just enough to get things like prospectus and dissertation out and change it to article or essay mm -hmm. in. And so that was part of it. Okay. But um, there's two things that I think about, uh, that I still think are interesting formally about it. One is that I'd had a lot of contentions with my then graduate school at the University of Illinois, Chicago, and with my dissertation director, Jim Sosnowski, who was mostly supportive but worried for me. Right. And so, um, so one of the things that happened is um, I designed it so that each node would reference links that were the titles of another node. And so the way it would work in a, on the web was obvious. You click, you go. But the way it would work when it was printed out is I arranged them all alphabetically. And so then as you move through the print text, you would see a link, denoted as a link with an underline, you lost the blue because I was printing in black and white. But when you, you could then flip back to the table of context, which was contents, which was also organized alphabetically, and get a page number. And you open it up to the page number. So it was like one of those find your own adventure novels. Right. And so it works. And I was following early experiments with print hypertext. Like that novel that was printed on cardboard in sheets yes. and tied with a ribbon. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you shuffled it. Mm -hmm. it, that's what I was thinking of when I did this. Um, it, there was never any consideration, it sounds like, that you might actually present your dissertation as a web text? Well, I actually did, in a, in a backwards sort of way. What I did with it was I had originally proposed like a seven-page dissertation, because my university insisted on a print artifact. Uh -huh. And so I said, well, what about the usual six pages, signature page, acknowledgments, that kind of thing? And a uh, page saying, here's where we're going. Go visit my, hi my hypertext. Mm -hmm. And they said, no. <laughs> but I, I had already prepared for that. That's why I did the print right. version. I didn't have to rewrite that. I had planned for that. Mm -hmm. But then, I, uh, when I actually turned it in, on um, one of the pages, I have a page in my print dissertation that says, go to the web text. Mm -hmm. I, I just recently realized that I didn't archive it well, and that it in fact is lost. I have it somewhere, mm -hmm. but it, it in fact is gone. Uh -huh. So I, I'll reinstate that somewhere. Uh, it should live on the web somewhere just because it is an early text and the first, I guess the first uh, dissertation on the web. The uh, web text, um, holds up very well. I mean, it, it still works um, in almost all of its parts. There are occasional links out of your web text that are no longer there. Yeah. Um, can't link to your syllabi anymore, which, you know, is something that could be fixed, but linking out to outside things that are literally gone yeah. um, is, is trickier. Um, I, do you have any thoughts on that aspect of web publishing? 
Absolutely. Uh, it's a standard for us, a technoculture. So uh, we don't allow linking out. Everything has to be internal. We have one exception, uh, uh, a document that we simply couldn't get to convert to a usable form. And so we had to leave it out on the author's space. But other than that, every single bit of technoculture is uh, in, on our servers and lives there and is backed up nightly. Because it's really important not to have web rot to me. And I published an article on web rot mm -hmm. that came out of my dissertation. Right. So I think that's part of the thing. If I can go back a step. Yes, certainly. Okay. Uh, the other formal aspect that I still think is really valuable, though I don't think it plays out in execution as well as it might, is the colors of the pages are not random. What they are is to represent sections of the dissertation. Mm -hmm. They are, in fact, the equivalent of chapters. And I'm not sure that that reads, because I don't think I ever explained that anywhere, but I think it anticipates things that were very hard to do back then, but now are pretty straightforward, like Drupal themes and sub-themes. Right. Where you can put a look on a page, and it can. that's how we divide up technoculture. Sure. Into volumes. Right. Um, you one um, artifact of the, the newness of web texts that's present in your piece is the extensive directions you give to people about how to use it. Um, it do you do you think that is now just unnecessary because so many people are familiar and and we don't do it or? Are there reasons that we might still want to do something like that? It's, it, it's a rhetorical consideration. It's audience. So if you think your web text is going to people who don't know how to read web text, then we probably should still. But I think generally, I don't think we think about web text at all as web text. Nobody thinks about Facebook as a hypertext. Nobody thinks about Chase.com as a hypertext. Right? Uh, and any modern application, it's the same thing. So I think people are past that point. I think everybody knows how to read hypertext. And many people know how to write it or at least engage them in active ways, not just reading them. I don't think we need to give directions for how to do hypertext unless there's a reason to do so, an audience consideration. Other than that, I think people know how to engage hypertext. How do you think that the web text influenced the trajectory of the field? Uh, you know, maybe in, in that it um uh, influenced other people to be brave, mm -hmm. which has always been, you know, we've, we've probably everybody on that list dealt with a dissertation director at some point who, <laughs> who uh, worried in the same way. Uh, but, but it was influential. Uh, do you think that it still is pertinent or, or only artifactually now? I think it's mostly artifactually. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, in reading it, I think it stands up. I think I said yeah. interesting and useful things. I'm not sure how many people are still citing it these days, and it's from 1996, so published in 1998. So I'm not sure that other than archival it has any influence. Um, I think, I think in its day it did. Um, it was certainly a widely cited article for a while, for, for like, probably as many as seven, ten years after it was published. It doesn't get cited much these days. Still does, though, occasionally. I will occasionally run into it in a contemporary citation. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad it's not, like, totally stupid. <laughs> but um, uh, it certainly led to a work of mine that I did. Let's see, text and technology? Mm -hmm. Ali Alvedo and Janice Walker. There's an essay in it that's based on my dissertation process, and that one is still being cited. That That's pretty, you know, people mention from time to time. And I have to add that Joel Moxley gave it a really bad review when he was summing up hypertext <laughs> dissertations. <laughs> I believe he called it garish. <laughs> but that was because we loved color back then. You know how it was. We could do it for the first time without having to pay in outrageous amounts of money. Right. So I got a little wild. On, on the other hand, the the color it, there was a reason for it. So uh, yes. So the choice of color might be different, but the color would still be incredibly useful in the, in the sense that you've described. 
Mm -hmm. I, I think so. I think it helps you move through the disk. I think, I think, uh, not the disk, well, both, but uh, the Kairos article, I think, I think, if I remember right in the citation, uh, navigation was one of the big issues. Because it is really easy to navigate. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I, as a matter of fact, I, when I occasionally went back to the table of contents when I was going through it again yesterday, um, I, I, was, I was surprised where I was, but knew why I was there. Um, oh, good. Because, mm -hmm. because moving from link to link, you often move from one part, one section to another part, and, but, but it makes absolute sense. Um, so, uh, a couple of questions about now. What are you working on now? Maybe, maybe you sh could talk a little bit about Technoculture, too. Oh, I'd love to. Uh, Technoculture is hugely uh, successful, I think, for a relatively new journal. We are just getting 2014 Volume 4 in place. Most of it is up there. There's a few little stragglers. And we changed our uh, submission dates from August 1st cutoff to May 1st cutoff. So we'll have the summer to work on stuff. Um, we have, oh, I forget the exact number, but it's like a huge number of readers and a huge number of hits. Uh, let me go to TC real fast. Sure. And then I can get today's figures. So I think that's it. And I really like, uh, the thing I like most about Technoculture is that it is cross-disciplinary. So we have, as of within the last year, 52, I have to take off my glasses, 524,317 visitors, in other words, hits on the site in Drupal Talk. And then the unique visitors, in other words, readers, are up to 44,475. That's since April 16th, 2014. So a lot of people are reading us, and a lot of people are citing us. Right. And I love that Technoculture is both a creative and critical journal. As do I. Um, and it's, uh, that's one thing that's unique about it, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think others work across disciplines a little bit often, but, uh, but you're right, uh, that, that's, that creative part, I, I think, is something that technoculture has always emphasized. Mm -hmm. um,